My name's Jean and I'm a watercolour addict and I hope after following my demonstrations you may feel my enthusiasm and wish to pick up a brush and paint too. I'm going to start with some very simple exercises and we have a beautiful piece of white paper. When we start painting everybody panics about how to cover it so I'm going to simplify and I'm going to choose a simple subject, we're going to paint a fuchsia. And the first thing we need to do when we're painting any subject at all is think about the colour to match the subject. I have a piece of the fuchsia here which I'm going to match on my palette and you can see some of the colours here, the red is going to blend very well with the fuchsia. How do we start a painting and how do we start in watercolour? If we start painting the subject directly, it would be like going into a gym, running up to the heaviest weights possible and working out, and you just wouldn't do that. You'd start very slowly and gradually build up to a wonderful painting. So I'm going to slow the process down, I'm going to make it as easy as possible, and I'd like you to follow me on these very simple step-by-steps. Let's look at colour to start with. Three very, very simple primaries. I'm using a number 10 sable and I'm going to take some alleys and crimson and make a very simple circle on the paper. That's neat colour. Look how much colour is on the brush if I now rinse the brush in the water. That's a waste which I try to avoid. If I then place a track of clean water away from the pigment, nothing is going to happen unless I ask it to. I can control watercolour. If I touch the pigment, it's going to flow into the water beautifully. I love listening to people telling me there's no control over watercolour. Actually, there is. You just have to know the medium and how to use it. Let's try the same thing with a different colour. Let's go to cadmium yellow. This is an opaque, nice big circle. As I'm not working on a painting, I'm going to be rinsing my brush and wasting the pigment. But for demonstration purposes, this is very worthwhile. Clean track of water. And if you understand the word track, I use it a lot when I'm teaching. A track is where I'm inviting the pigment to run. So if I touch the pigment, it will flow. But it's quite interesting if you look at the difference between the transparent colour and the opaque. Transparent colours run very quickly. Opaques are a little bit lazy. They just sit there and go at their own free will. Get to know your pigments as characters and friends. It really makes such a huge difference when you start painting your masterpieces. Last one, we'll just apply some cobalt blue here. Then using clean water for a track will keep my colours fresh when it comes to my main painting. Let's see what happens when we invite the blue. A little bit happier and it's run down. I would suggest you do this with every single pigment you use and learn how fast the pigment flows through the water. We are working with water and colour. There we go. So that's the first exercise I'd like you to carry out. Of course, that's quite straightforward because what we're really doing is working with one pigment. How often would you use those neat pigments? Possibly you could use Alice and Crimson for the red of a fuchsia, but more often than not we use mixed colours. I prefer to mix my shades rather than using them directly from the palette. So what would happen if we mixed some Alice and Crimson, we can do it on the paper actually, with some cadmium yellow. We get a beautiful orange. And if we fade that away you can see Whoops. Where the colour hits the other, you have a different shade and these shades will make patterns as they run down. Let's try that with the blue and yellow. What is important is while the colour is drying, the colours keep fusing. It's very important at this stage not to go in with your brush. Just let it happen naturally and learn from these little exercises. A little bit of yellow. Of course, you can mix in your palette, but I find it a lot more fun to mix on the paper. And let's run that away. You're going to get a really nice greeny blue here. Let's try that one more time with some red. I'll go a little bit lighter now. The more water I add, the different the effect. Let's try a little bit of blue. and run those together. There's a very beautiful purple coming here. 
And you should try mixing lots of different pigments and get different shades. Very good way of experimenting. So now we've, we've played with some colour, we, we've carried out a few exercises, and we've chosen a subject. With my technique, I don't use a pencil. I don't use any sketching. I go straight in with colour. And what I'm doing, I'm going to look at this plant. I'm going to be very naughty, but I'm going to snap this off. There we go. And now I can actually closely study my subject, which is very pretty. And this could be anything. It could be a boat, it could be a bowl of fruit, it could be a portrait. Whatever the subject is, I'm going to paint it in exactly the same way. This particular plant has got petals radiating away from the flower, so these are quite interesting. Obviously, you need to think about where you're starting on this beautiful white piece of paper. Don't start too near the edge, because obviously you're going to run out of paper, so try to come somewhere in the centre, possibly off-centre, so we could lead away from it. And I'm actually painting a study, not a full painting. This is just for you to see how I start a painting. Um, I'm going to start with one petal up here. I've loaded my brush with some alloys and crimson, and I'm going to translate what I can see over here. And if something is translucent, then I'm going to use more water than pigment. So although I put the colour there, I'm actually going to bleed it away with the brush. The water and the pigment are going to make very pretty patterns, so right now it's important for me not to touch it. There's a second petal there, so I'm going to bring that out with water. The pigment will flow into it, just like the first exercise that we've just done. I'm going to do that. If you just relax with your brush strokes, touch the paper very, very gently, and let the pigment do the job. You don't really need to do very much as an artist, you just need to enjoy looking at the subject. Behind here is another section of the plant. I'm going to just fill that in. Maybe let that blur in a little bit here. OK. Where I see light, I'm literally going to just drop water in. I am really looking for the light. I, I'm looking for ways to make this a little bit more interesting than the subject really is. And I'm still working with neat pigment. I haven't actually mixed any shades yet. So I'm actually using Windsor Violet. I'm looking at these roughly skirt edges. I'm just going to bring those down. The direction of the brush strokes hint at the petals and I continually look at the subject to see where I need to move my brush. And I'm going to let the Alice and Crimson marry with the Windsor Violet by inviting it, just like in the exercise. This is the most important bit. Do not go in with your brush now. Just let the pigments work on their own. How about softening some petals and letting that beautiful colour run here a little bit? Now I'll get some nice watermarks running. Very pretty. I could move to a smaller brush. I've got a rigger here, just for these little tiny stamen. I studied brushwork in China, so I do find it very easy to use my brush. I think the problem is when we start seeing fine detail, we can get trapped into doing hundreds and hundreds of little touches. Just try and keep your work as simple as possible, and then we can start putting on some of these little stamen at the end here. Next, the top of the fuchsia has a little green shape, which I'm going to mix cobalt blue. I will mix it on the palette with a little bit of yellow. Make that a little bit darker. And just bring that in in one stroke on one side. And I'm just going to soften the edge here. And again, I'm going to let the green run in. And it has rather a dark, I've just added a bit of French ultramarine blue here to the Alice and Crimson that's in my palette. And with one simple stroke, I'm just going to bring that over here. And that's going to marry into here. Where the colours run into each other, I find that attractive. Um, it's something I want. I want the colour fusions. Years ago, I think people panicked if we had cauliflowers and blooms, and now we all celebrate them and enjoy them, which is wonderful. There we go. I've managed to capture the flower, but it's, it's not exactly exciting. So I'm just going to bleed some of the colour away, as that's a little bit dry. I'm going to come around the edge and invite some colour to bleed away. Same with the purple. This gives a hint that the flower could actually be moving. I might leave a little white line there, which is called trapping the light. 
but it wouldn't really be sitting there without any foliage. So I will drop a few green leaves in up here. I shall move that to one side. If you want any lighter areas at any time, you can go back in with a little bit of water, but I'm going to leave that for one second. And with a little bit of French ultramarine and cadmium yellow. Don't go for the first green that you can make on a palette, which is a very easy option, but it's also a very lazy option. Play and have fun with it. Okay, and I can look at the leaves here and maybe I'll just add one or two. And usually leaves are a simple curved shape. Maybe there's a bush in the garden, so we can drop some over here as well. I do see dark at the base of some of those leaves. and I'm just going to drop that in. Just do a very quick five minute warm up before you start painting your serious subjects. It makes such a big difference to the rest of the day. There we go. We can blur those out a little bit. Now, how much you play with your study is completely up to you. But the whole point of this is literally just a five minute warm up before you start painting something seriously. So I have a lovely expression that I use. I ask everybody to paint something deliberately for the bin when they first start painting in the morning. It sounds a little bit crazy, but it actually works because you take the pressure off of your shoulders. Because the problem is a lot of people pick up their brushes and they think I'm going to paint a cat or a dog or whatever. And then they expect to not only paint the cat, they're now going to frame the cat. Then they're going to put this cat in an exhibition and it's going to be the best cat in the exhibition and it's going to sell. Before you know it, you have all this pressure on your shoulders and all you really wanted to do is enjoy painting. And I think I'm going to stop there because otherwise I'm going to fiddle. And that's my favourite word, do not fiddle. There's a lovely feeling of light coming just here. I don't know if you can see that literally on that side. I'll exaggerate it before I put it to one side. Here, looking at this section of the flower, there's a lovely little highlight there. And I'm just going to strengthen that here so that you can see that is actually part of the painting. There we go. Now I could paint this for the next hour and I could add more flowers um, and I could turn it into a serious painting, but that isn't the point. This really is just a warm up. If I get carried away and start turning this into a serious painting, that's exactly what you're going to do. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to put this to one side. 